When a game has been around for over a decade, but still gets updated often, you tend to see a range of unusual elements or features. Whether they were experimental, purely added to test aspects of the game in various ways, or features added but never properly implemented, Minecraft Java Edition has a sizable list of unused features. What's cool about unused features is that for the most part they are in the game, or mostly functional, and can actually be used if you know the correct commands. But, because they are unused, it's likely that they didn't really fit in with the game's theme or style, or maybe they were just too overpowered. And that's what makes unused features so interesting. The fact that many of them are incredibly unique or outright weird, to the point you would think that they were modded in. So, let's dive right into it and go through some of Minecraft's most interesting unused features. First of all, did you know Wither Skeletons have a unique feature when given a bow? I should clarify that while Wither Skeletons can pick up armor and weapons, they are unable to pick up bows from the ground. But using commands, you can spawn a Wither Skeleton with a bow, and look what happens. For some reason, even though their bow is entirely normal and has no enchant or extra features, they shoot fire arrows, as if their bow had the flame enchant on it. Also, interestingly, you can see that there are movement changes. Here is a normal Wither Skeleton trying to attack me. Look at its direct and fast movements, especially on its legs. Now look at the Wither Skeleton with the bow. It's gliding around strangely and has weird movements, very similar to that of a skeleton. Now, as for why this flame arrow feature exists, well, I was able to find a bug report from 2014, where a moderator mentioned that it works as intended to make up for the fact that bows can't give the Wither effect. However, it's likely that that information is outdated, as tipped arrows can now give players the Wither effect. Nevertheless, it's a cool feature that has seemingly been forgotten about. Next up, we have one of the cooler features that isn't in the game. I'm sure you've had many situations when playing where you found a dungeon or some other random chest around the world only to be sorely disappointed when you realize it has bad items in it. So what if I told you that there is actually an unobtainable potion effect in the game called luck that can improve your odds of getting better chest loot? And no, I'm not joking. Let me explain. But before I do, make me feel like I have the luck effect and subscribe if you haven't already. No pressure though. Anyways, in Minecraft versions 1.8 and earlier, a chest loot in let's say a village for example, would always contain the same contents, so if you got that seed of the world, recreated it and went to the same chest, it would have the exact same items in it. But in 1.9, loot tables were added to the game, meaning that chests don't generate loot until you open them. You can visually see this when you go into spectator mode and try to open a dungeon chest or other generated chest, it will say, unable to open, loot not generated yet. That being said, even with the addition of loot tables, when a world is generated, it saves a loot table seed. And the loot table seed is always the same for the same world seed, so you would still get the same items if you recreated a world and went to the same chest. However, according to the Minecraft wiki, luck is a status effect that makes a player more likely to receive better loot from certain loot tables in generated structures. And this applies to any of the generated chests. So, if you have the luck effect, when you open a generated chest for the first time, the game will check the player's luck and change the chest loot table, thus changing the items in it. Here I've given myself a really high luck effect, and also used a command which creates a dungeon chest, where the loot hasn't been generated yet. And while it might not immediately look like it, each chest I open, and thus loot I generate, is relatively rare. The enchanted books you get are always good, there is a higher chance of golden apples as well as other rare items, and I'm sure if you sat down and did the calculations, you would see that you are in fact getting rarer items. Luck effect also applies to fishing, allowing you to get better loot when fishing with a potion effect. Now, interestingly, while this effect was added all the way back in 2016 in Minecraft version 1.9, it remained unobtainable in survival mode up until Minecraft Snapshot 19w13a, a 1.14 snapshot released in March of 2019. In this snapshot, luck was obtainable in survival mode through an arrow of luck that could be rewarded to players by Fletcher Villagers whenever they defeated a raid and had the hero of the village effect. However, this change was reverted only three weeks later, and as such, there is currently no way to obtain luck in survival mode. Next up, we have the Killer Bunny, or Rabbit. The Killer Bunny is a version of the bunny that can only be summoned using this command. When summoned, it has this little nameplate above its head and is also pure white with blood red eyes, which notably are horizontally shaped rather than vertical like other passive rabbits. And these guys hit like trucks. On easy mode, they deal around two and a half hearts of damage. On normal, they do about four hearts. And on hard, they do a whopping six hearts of damage. They can also hop around faster than standard rabbits, moving more like spiders. They will also not despawn if you switch the difficulty to peaceful, even though they are a hostile mob, but rather they will just try to attack you and do no damage. They also attack wolves and foxes, of which they actually tend to be in one-on-ones. Killer rabbits are immune to the thorns enchantment and hilariously can be bred with not only each other, but also normal rabbits, therefore potentially producing baby killer rabbits, which also hit like trucks, dealing around three hearts of damage on hard difficulty. 
pro tip, if you hold a carrot, they will follow you and not attack you. The Killer Rabbit was added to the game as a reference to the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail, which has a very funny, famous Killer Rabbit scene. It would be interesting if they could spawn naturally in the game, but with lower odds. For example, on my SMP server, og-network.net, if they were naturally spawnable, you could use them as hidden base defense, or even just to prank your friends. A very unusual feature that has actually been in the game since early 2013, the Minecart Spawner is another one of Minecraft's unobtainable entities. Now, like normal minecarts, they can move on rails, and for some reason, you cannot see the little mob that would be in the spawner cage as you can with normal spawners. Likewise, the spawner minecart only spawns pigs, and you cannot change what mobs spawn with spawn eggs in creative, as you can with normal spawners. The only way to do this would be to edit the item's NBT data. What's also interesting is that proper spawning functionality was never implemented into them, as the spawner will only ever spawn mobs within the radius it was summoned in. That's kind of confusing, so let me demonstrate. If I summon the minecart spawner at the right end of this little track, it will only spawn mobs when in this area. So, if it moves down to the left side of the track, it will never spawn any mobs until I push it back, to which a mob will spawn instantly. So even if they were obtainable somehow in survival, they unfortunately would not work properly. That being said, some early tweets by Dinnerbone seem to display them working properly, with the pigs seemingly spawning wherever the minecart moves. Nevertheless, even with their addition to the game all the way back in 1.5, they have yet to see proper implementation, and likely never will. It's fun to think of the intricate farms you could make using this feature if it was added properly though. How about some unused game sounds next? Honestly, these are the most interesting on the list because it's likely that these sounds were created for some biome which was scrapped, or some new location which never came to be. Right now you are listening to the Cave Chimes audio loop, one of the four loops which according to the wiki could be once found in the game's files. The Cave Chimes audio loop sounds like it might have been a good candidate for some of the new caves coming in 1.17, especially deep dark caves where the warden spawns as they kind of give off an unsettling vibe. There is also the birds chirping sound effect which sounds like something straight from a mod pack. This sound effect gives off a very alive and rainforesty feel and I could see them considering using it for the jungle biome or maybe for when parrots were added to the game, but who knows. Next there is ocean which is very calming and relaxing. You can often hear waves breaking against the shore, which gives it a very beachy and natural feel, maybe as if you're on an abandoned beach or an island. Mojang may have considered using this one for 1.13, but due to the fact that we still don't have waves in the game, it wouldn't have exactly made sense. And finally, Waterfall. The shortest of all three audio loops, lasting only 5 seconds. The thing with Minecraft water streams or in-game waterfalls is they lack that massive water colliding impact and rush of real waterfalls, so I doubt this sound effect would be very fitting either. Zombie horses are another one of Minecraft's older features that have been unused for quite some time. Now, while they are entirely unobtainable in survival mode, unlike the other unused features we have talked about today, you can summon them in without a command, as they also have a spawn egg which is accessible in creative mode. Anyways, like zombies, zombie horses are green skinned and their eyes are completely black. Also like zombies, they drop rotten flesh when killed. Now, unlike normal horses, zombie horses cannot be tamed unless you spawn a tameable one with a command. Zombie horses have a set health of 15 or 7.5 hearts and also a set speed. This is different to normal horses as they can have varying amounts of health and speed. While they are technically an undead mob, they don't burn in daylight and also don't despawn in peaceful, although that makes a bit more sense because they are not hostile. Now, they also sink underwater because they are undead, and I thought this might be useful as you could ride them underwater without them drowning. But unfortunately, this seems to be bugged or just a feature that was never properly implemented. Whenever you try to ride a zombie horse underwater or mount one underwater, you just get kicked off and can't remount. And finally, while baby versions of the mob are spawnable, they are not able to be bred. Zombie horses were first added back in June of 2013 in Minecraft version 1.6.1, the horse update. However, they could never spawn or be summoned into the game until version 1.7.2, released a few months later. And since then they have received minor updates over the years, with small model tweaks or changes, but still cannot naturally spawn or be obtained in survival mode. One final weird but small unused feature I thought I'd show you all is the unused version of the Alex skin. According to the Minecraft wiki, when the opacity of all pixels on the Alex skin is set to 100%, unused textures are visible. The unused texture displays Alex wearing glasses and seems to be overlapped by Steve's arms, which implies that Steve was used as a template for the Alex skin. Interesting stuff. But that about wraps it up for today. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to leave a like and comment, as I may make a part 2 if this one is well received, but only if you guys like it enough, so be sure to let me know. Subscribe if you haven't already, and join the Discord. Links are always in the description. Thank you all so much for watching.